The Delphi Technique Developed by the RAND Corporation as a Cold War mind control technique, Delphi is used to channel a group of people to accept a point of view that is imposed on them, while convincing them that it was their idea. In the 1970s and 80s, it was used to convince landowners of the merits of accepting general plan maps. Delphi can be used on any group, from just one person to the entire world. Trained facilitators present a range of choices to a group, but have tailored them to direct the outcome. This is most often done in public meetings, called visioning meetings, put on by your city or county to get your opinion on your town 2020 or 2035. Money for these programs often comes from federal agencies, members of the President's Council on Sustainable Development, in the form of grants to your local government. The meetings are advertised as an opportunity for you to give your input to an exciting new plan for the redesign of your city center for the future. You'll usually see it as a specific plan for a redevelopment project or a regional transportation plan that involves housing and land use restrictions. Delphi is used in school board meetings, in trainings, at neighborhood association meetings, and other places where the organizers want to give the appearance that they have listened to community opinion and incorporated it into their plan. By the way, you'll never hear the word Delphi, they will never acknowledge that they're doing it. The key thing to know about this is that of course you have no input. Only comments and observations that support the pre-approved plan will be supported. All others will be written on a big pad of paper and discarded later. The illusion of public buy-in is all that is needed. The organizers can later point to the fact that they held a public meeting, a certain number of residents attended, public comment was taken, and the community approved the plan. The facilitator is often a private consultant who has been professionally trained in running and managing a meeting. This consultant has been hired by your city to fulfill the requirement that the project has been seen and supported by its citizens, it's your plan. If the project is a controversial one, the city may have put out the call for non-profit groups, neighborhood associations, city boards and commissions, and city employees to send members to seed the audience and outnumber potential opponents. This is war. On those few occasions when the majority of the attendees object to the planned outcome, the facilitator will close the meeting and reschedule it for another time and place. You are experiencing the new consensus. So let's see what goes on in a Delphi meeting. As you come in the door you'll be asked to sign in. You'll be given a name tag and, depending on the meeting type, you'll either sit at tables, or you'll be in an auditorium. A brief overview of the project will be given, and no questions will be allowed. The facilitator may try to establish the demographics of the attendees by asking you to raise your hand if you're between 18 to 25, 26 to 35 etc., your race, and gender. Now the meeting begins in earnest. Speakers will include government officials, sometimes your mayor or council people, representatives from non-profit organizations, and local business persons with an interest in the outcome, such as engineers, architects, and planners. The meeting is on a tight time schedule, and there are few opportunities for questions. What questions are permitted, are usually answered briefly, or deflected to later. The facilitator has produced attractive PowerPoint slides and colored handouts with lots of photos of middle-class people recreating among sunlit multi-story buildings with wide sidewalks lined with bistro tables. You notice that there is no manufacturing. In this pleasant utopia there are few cars, lots of high-speed trains, blue skies, and bikes. Lots of bikes. Open space parks, but no private yards. Shallow porches that face the street. Buildings constructed right behind the sidewalk and touching their neighbors. You may be shown a set of maps of your town and told to color in areas where you'd like to see the pastel utopia instead of what's there now. By the way, often the property owners in the specific project area have deliberately not been notified about this meeting and they absolutely will not have been sought out to attend. This meeting is for the public, meaning anyone can attend from anywhere and give their opinion about the vision. As people are happily scribbling away with their crayons and gold stars like kindergartners, they are unaware that a large percentage of the group has already been briefed on the project and instructed to manage their table. Yes, there are shills at every table. In the larger meetings they may identify themselves as being part of the organizing team, and they will run the table openly. While the unsuspecting real people are chatting, the table monitors are observing their behavior. Who is argumentative, who is docile, who can be triggered to cause a scene, who can be counted on to support the project. Neighborhood leaders who cooperate are identified for cultivation later. 
they will be used to start neighborhood associations, or encouraged to dominate existing ones. When the meeting is going smoothly, you'll never notice the obvious. That you haven't been given any real choices, and that all of the printed material shows the project just as it will be when finalized regardless of anything you might say. At your table you might say something like, hey, I don't like the idea of narrowing Main Street to two lanes. But you'll either be ignored, or several of the people at the table will team up to show you that it's best for the community, and don't you want your town to be friendly for bikes and pedestrians. You might say, how can the fire department get through there if you put a median down center street? You'll be told that it has already been approved by the fire department and your comment will be written down to be thrown out later. What happens if you dare to speak out? Communitarianism is at the heart of consensus meetings. A vital element of communitarianism is the use of social pressure to make you conform. Shame. The point is to create a climate of isolation in the meeting for those who do not agree. The idea of dissent is too scary, too exposed, and too antisocial for you to brave ridicule and the disapproval of your peers. So if you do dare to speak out, you will be ignored, laughed at, maligned, shamed, booed or shouted down. Individual table monitors may go to person they've identified as liable to make a scene to loudly agree with you in order to make you appear to have a fringe point of view. The facilitator may allow this bit of chaos to continue for a minute so that the tension can be relieved and your question forgotten. When the meeting is over, you'll be thanked for your input and leave, feeling that maybe you're the only one who doesn't like the plan or who felt manipulated. You might even decide that you're not going back to one of those meetings since you didn't really feel heard, and besides it took hours of your evening. Maybe you have a nagging bit of shame that you were visioning on someone else's property, someone who wasn't there and couldn't protest that they like their property just the way it is. Maybe you don't want to think about what it would take to make that vision real. But you shrug your shoulders and walk to your car feeling that you've been a good citizen and participated in a community event. You've been Delphied. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. How could all of this be going on without my knowledge or approval? You don't get asked to vote on covert activities in your government. Treaties and agreements, like United Nations Agenda 21, the agenda for the 21st century, are made, and you won't hear about it. Maybe there's a presidential signing statement that can supersede the Congress, or maybe that isn't even necessary. Just because you didn't notice, does that mean it hasn't happened? If it's in the paper in the second section on page 3 on one day in the year were you informed? If the county held 15 meetings on the formation of the general plan, with full compliance with UN Agenda 21, and you stayed home and watched TV or went to 15 meetings where they never mentioned Agenda 21, does that mean that it doesn't exist? If you don't put all of the different restrictions, regulations, propaganda movies, books, radio, magazines and TV together, does that mean it's not happening? The irony is that UN Agenda 21 mandates more citizen involvement, but does it by creating so many boards, commissions, regional agencies, non-profits, meetings, and programs that it is impossible to stay on top of what is happening. So we become, necessarily, more fragmented, less of a neighborhood, exhausted and isolated because we can't keep up. The so-called citizen involvement is dictated by phony neighborhood groups with paid lobbyists and facilitators running them. The boards and commissions are chosen based on team players or shills, selected to push through an end game by running over the few actual unconnected citizens on them. These groups are the pre-screening groups for candidates for public office. They are the ones who get donations at election time. It's doubtful that anyone will get on the ballot who doesn't play ball. Then we're told that we came up with the new regulations. We're too burnt out to fight on more than one issue. We may be victimized by our government regulations, but since it's done one project or property or business at a time we seldom get the chance to join together. Or we may be afraid that we'll be targeted by government, local groups, or the newspaper if we stand up. The less of us who own small businesses and private property, the less of us there are to care or notice when unjust decisions are made. So a crashed economy where we lose our homes and businesses supports UN Agenda 21. You never hear about Agenda 21 Sustainable Development on conservative radio. You never hear about it on liberal radio either. You don't see it on Fox. You don't see it on MSNBC. They won't talk about it. Republicans and Democrats won't break the silence. They're both in favor of it. Four presidents supported it. Two Bushes, Clinton and Obama. When we bring it up, we are either called conspiracy theorists or told that it doesn't exist. But it does. And they know it. So it's a race now. You're in it. The race to expose it to educate your friends, business associates, relatives, and neighbors, to get the word out. People know that something is happening, but they can't put a name on it, and they may not realize that it is all connected. But you do. You might wonder why they bother to ask your opinion at meetings. 
Why don't those guys at the top just push it through without Delphi? Because they don't want to remove the green mask. They'd have to acknowledge that there is a green mask, and that would incite civil unrest. Take a look at the European Union for the results of austerity measures, riots, martial law and increased domestic surveillance. The show of force is intimidating, but it's also a view of what's behind the mask. Another reason why you may not have heard of UN Agenda 21 before is because opposition to it is often conflated with anti-Semitism. Calling it a Zionist plot is absurd considering that Zionism is an ultranationalist movement that is completely opposed to the dissolution of national boundaries, Israel is about the size of Vancouver Island and slightly larger than New Jersey. If you're approaching it from that angle, I urge you to drop those attitudes. It is not productive, not realistic, you could say it's a Protestant plot, would that make sense, and feeds right into the dialectic that pits us against one another. The mainstream media can then refer to it as fringe, and that justifies their lack of reportage. Demonizing all liberals is foolish and wrong. Don't play the alienation game with half of the US. We need to work together. Familiarize yourself with communitarianism. It's the political philosophy behind all of this. It states that the individual's rights are a threat to the global community. Everyone is an individual, so we are all a threat to the global community. Our rights to property ownership, to personal mobility and life choices, to feed and clothe ourselves, are a danger to the global community. So we must be rationed. We must be controlled. We must be watched. We must be regulated, restricted, and balanced. Our individual rights must be balanced against those unnamed rights granted to the world community by the United Nations, as codified by Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. Communitarianism is based on a paradigm, a problem is created. A solution is proposed. Struggle between the two sides produces an outcome that is a third way. This so-called third way would never have been agreed to accept that now, it is called a solution to a problem. That didn't exist. And now the solution is the new normal. Corporatocracy. Government by corporation. Public-private partnerships. Tax credits to corporations. Non-profits that are also corporations, but have a green face. BP is green. It doesn't matter what political party they profess to support, they take turns funding both sides. It's UN Agenda 21. Administered in your town by directives and training by the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives, or ICLEI, and its many partners. Everyone is being impacted by UN Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. It doesn't come with flashing lights and a label, so you have to be sharp and put it together. Since your government uses different names for all of the programs, it's alphabet soup, you don't recognize that there is a connection when you hear, for example, your 10-year-old child won't be automatically going to the middle school in your neighborhood, but has to apply for admission. She or he may end up across town, where you'll never attend parent or teacher night, never become friends with other parents, and not volunteer in the classroom and hear the lesson, because you can't make it home from your job in time. Their business is being subjected to a business improvement tax by your local government, and you have to pay it, even though your customers now have to put money in the meters, pay huge parking tickets, and can go to the mall with free parking. You inherited a piece of land from your folks, but now you find out that it's impossible to build anything on it, because the county has an ordinance that won't allow you to install a septic system on your 40 acres. And the biotic resource corridor that it's in won't allow development anyway. And besides you're in the view so bicyclists can look at your land as they ride a nearby trail, and a building would ruin that. You thought it was too good to be true when you and your husband were able to buy that nice three-bedroom house in the suburbs, but the mortgage broker was really excited about the interest-only loan, and the payments were affordable. Now you see that you were ignorant about how the loan was structured and, along with most of your new neighbors, you've lost everything. You're hoping to get into one of the affordable housing units by the train station. You're trying to quit smoking since you feel like a pariah everywhere you go, but it's just so tough that you finally agree with your doctor that the best thing is to go on, Zoloft or Welbutrin, so you can get through it. Now you seem to be floating through the day with a cozy blanket around your brain, and you can see why your wife takes Prozac. You don't believe that you're being forced out of your private vehicle, but then you notice that even though Libya produces only 2% of the world's oil, your gasoline cost just jumped up 20% since Gaddafi started shouting. You also have noticed that there's talk about a vehicle miles traveled tax in your town council that would charge you for long commutes. You move there to buy a house, but the market has crashed and you're not going anywhere for a while. You, of course, were an avid fan of the smart train idea and voted for the one fourth cent sales tax hike in perpetuity, but now the train is a distant hope since they underestimated costs and the money went to repair the tracks for freight and big pensions for staff. 
All of those smart growth dwellers by the tracks are now going to hear freight train whistles, smell the fumes six feet away, and risk injury at grade crossings. You're sick of being called an oil addict and can't understand why innovations for energy-efficient vehicles have never been funded by your government. Until now, when you can pay $40,000 for a compact that gets 35 miles to the gallon. You're raising your kids on the farm you grew up on, but there are so many regulations and rules that you spend hours a day, filing out paperwork, and complying with new laws that you didn't know about, until you violated them. Costs for feed and seed and processing are increasing faster than you can manage, and without your wife's job you'd be sunk. You still haven't paid your brother and sister for the farm, you inherited it jointly from your dad, and now with taxes going up, you're not sure you can keep it, unless you sell a conservation easement to the open space district. You look at your three kids, though, and wonder how they'll be able to pay the inheritance tax when you die, and there are no more conservation easement rights to sell. You're getting ready to graduate from high school, and you'd like to go to a state university, but you need a 4.2 or higher, and besides, you haven't done nearly enough volunteering for non-profits like your friends have. You figure you're going to have to take a year off and serve in the Peace Corps or Community Corps, or you'll never get into a good school. You came home from work and noticed that your energy company had installed a smart meter without asking you, and now you've heard that they can shut it off remotely, monitor your use, reduce your allotment, and generally mess with you anytime. Your brother's kids sleep in a room right next to the whole bank of meters at his condominium complex, and they're complaining of headaches and nausea. You've gone from saying you'd never bother to learn computers to checking your email every half hour, and your kids never look up from their eye, whatever when you talk to them. Their classrooms are so crammed with kids that even you think remote learning might be a good idea, and, hey, textbooks online should save money, they can update them, change them, change history with a click of the mouse, great. You just came back from a vacation in Mexico and noticed the retina recognition and fingerprint readers at every customs officer's station, and it made you nervous. Of course they're not using them on everyone yet, but how long will it be? This book was written long before the corona pandemic, and everything that was written had already happened. You've also read that they have miniature drone spy hummingbirds that can fly 8 miles, in and out of windows, and record sound and video. Who? Your government. What else do they have? Do they know you're watching this? You go to a neighborhood association meeting out of some sense of civic duty, and see that they're electing officers to the association. You'd like to nominate your neighbor, but you can't, because the bylaws say that any candidate has to be okayed by the board first. You try to make a comment, but you're booed by your neighbors in bike helmets and spandex. It's clear that they have a candidate who will be elected and claim to speak for the entire neighborhood. The shocking truth is that they don't just Delphi meetings, your entire government and legal system is being delphi and then is transitioning to government by consensus. This is not a left or right issue. No American wants increased domestic surveillance, corporate takeover of our political, legal, and governmental systems, restrictions on free speech, and the enormous waste of our resources through endless war. Call it smart growth. Call it sustainable development. Call it form-based zoning. Call it capacity building. Call it consensus building. Call it green building. Call it wildlands. Call it homelands. Call it outcome-based education. Hey, it's not what is Agenda 21, it's what isn't Agenda 21. It's not Republican, and it's not Democrat. It's not Libertarian, and it's not Independent. It's Communitarian. The new law of the land. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.